Welcome to another video. My name is Chris B and this video is about the Hasbro fan Q&A which they held this morning about uh, follow-up questions to the product reveals uh, during Hasbro PulseCon 2021. So basically it was a Zoom meeting where they go around in circles and everybody gets to ask five questions which have to be specifically about Hasbro PulseCon. So here's the full video. Hit the like, please subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you on the next video. That is a great question. Excellent. I have a question. You'll be shocked to hear. This is a question from Matt. I am merely the vessel. Um, so <laughs> it's the question. Uh, with a number of US retailers cancelling custom pre-orders, customer pre-orders, and shipping delays on previously announced release dates, is there any way that Hasbro can keep customers updated on shifts in timescales and delivery dates, maybe via a page on Pulse? Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's, it's a good question. I mean, we've been saying the state of the world a lot uh, this morning, and I think that's kind of led into a lot of this and we're, we're you know, adapting to that state of the world. Um, it's certainly something we've talked about and we'll look into there. There are challenges that I won't uh, get into, but obviously our, our goal is always, you know, the thing that drives us is delivering the best possible product for you guys and, and you know, taking, taking the angst out of it as much as possible. So it's, it's something we've talked about and it's something we could see in the future. Cool, awesome. All righty, Dan from Star Wars Collector. Uh, morning. So Hasbro promoted the PulseCon 2021 exclusive Black Series Cantina Showdown playset, uh, being able to combine with the additional Cantina Showdown playsets to create the full scene in Star Wars New Hope. But you guys limited one per customer. How are we supposed to build out the playset if you guys don't make quantities available? And will there be more quantities available in this form or another in the future? Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a question we've gotten a few times this morning. It's definitely a fair one. Um, again, it, it gets to that state of the world. When we when we originally envisioned this item and kind of designed it as modular, whatever it was, a year and a half, 18 months ago, the world was in a very different place. And and just honestly, right now, we, we didn't get the quantities that we had expected because of the state of the world. Um, we're, we're potentially looking into getting additional quantities of that item in 2022, because again, we want fans to be able to build out the full cantina if, if they want to. Given the quantities we had available, you know, we wanted to do our best to ensure that everyone who wanted one got one. That was kind of the side that we aired on. But again, you know, there's there's the possibility that we would get additional quantities out in 2022. Um, you know, I don't know if Chris wants to speak to the the last part about kind of getting it out in one form or another. Yeah, and I think there's there's always the possibility that we can find a new, another way to bring out some of those cantina part sets, but. Um, there's no plans for that currently, but it, it is the sort of thing we always look to is, is ways to, to continue to offer pieces like that for fans. So. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, David from Endor Express. Morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Um, my question is regards to the Galaxy's Edge uh, products that you have put out uh, or announced. Uh, there's three sets. Um, in the first batch, in the first year, you guys had new characters like DJ Rex and Hondo. Um, this one, there's you know, there's a there's fewer newer kind of characters. Um, can you kind of talk about how possible it is to get someone like Doc Ondar or you know Vibrati yeah. um, into the in like future sets, something like that? Yeah, it, it, it's certainly possible. Um, you know, nothing's out of scope. Uh, I think there were kind of a few new characters like the pit droid. Obviously, that's a smaller droid, uh, but I think that one was brand new. Um, you know, our, our tooling library is certainly at a different place than it was you know, for Black Series three, four years ago when we were first planning those items. I think we first started talking about them in 2017. Black Series was only four years old at the time. Now it's eight years old. Uh, so just we were able to do some, some things with our existing tooling library that we weren't able to do back then. Uh, but yeah, certainly those are great characters from the parks and certainly things we've talked about and, and some characters we could see in the future. Cool. Awesome. All righty. Jose from Endor System. Hi, good morning. Morning. In the first few waves of a uh, retro series, you saw a special figure in addition to the basic figures in each wave, such as the Charky, Lux No Speeder, and Stone Trooper Remnant figures. With this new way of retro figures from the Mandalorian, will there be also a special figure that comes with a special package or just the basic figures? So those, there's, there's no plans for that currently. Those first few waves, like there was a, 
we had opportunities with our games team to bring other special figures out for those. And that's, that's where those came into play. Um, we're still looking for ways to do other options like that and bring special figures out for people. But with the first figures that we were doing being recreations of Kenner stuff, we felt it was important to find ways to do new figures and kind of see how fans responded to those. I mean, they were, they were passions for us to do those, but now that we know people really like those new figures and the Mandalorian and, and other stuff like that's, it's a fun way to do things. Um, so always, like I said, always looking for new ways to do other figures and find little, little places we can do exclusives or something like that. So hopefully there'll be more like that coming. Absolutely. Awesome. All right, and Chris from Galactic Figures. Uh, bring round one to a close, Chris. Uh, good morning. Um, right. The Vintage Collection Troop Builder sets that you have uh, exclusively on Hasbro Policy Shop Disney, um, what are the plans for those sets? Are those going to stay in rotation for a few years or when they're sold out, they're, they're gone? Because the Stormtrooper set's been sold out for a few weeks now, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it's kind of neither one of those extremes. It's somewhere in the middle. They aren't necessarily one and done items. The intention is definitely not, you know, oh, this is the quantity they sell out. They're done forever. Uh, that being said, again, with the current state of the world, you know, we, we, we would love to kind of, you know, keep them in stock or do reruns and have them come back. We're, we're just not sure how feasible that is. Um, you know, if, if there's that demand for items, as always, we're exploring keeping those in stock. I've said in the past, it's our, our dream that every fan who wants one of a certain item gets them. That's obviously kind of, you know, good for us. It's good for you guys. It's, it's what we want. Uh, it's just a matter of priorities and trade-offs, but it's something we're exploring for these items. Okay. Absolutely. Awesome. All righty. Back to the top with Mark. Second question. Uh, you've done smaller eye spiders uh, for the build-up packs in Vintage and Black Series, and they look fantastic. Uh, is there any possibility of a big spider uh, ever seen in the light of day? <laughs> uh, I think that would be awesome. Um, I don't think we're ready to do a HasLab spider, though, to attack the, the Razor Crest, but I, I think we're, I mean, we say it all the time, we're always looking for ways to do new stuff. The a giant spider, I think unlikely there's probably going to be other things that would take priority. I, I don't think anybody would choose an, a giant ice spider over a blurg, say. Like, but I mean, I, creatures are a fun part of Star Wars, and we'll, we'll keep looking for ways to do things. So awesome. All righty, back to you, Dan. Uh, the Haslab uh, Black Series six inch Rancor looks awesome. We got drill, but you didn't include the bone that Luke shoves in his mouth. Um, will the bone meat be included if the numbers hit the bonus tiers? And can you possibly make it break apart? Uh, it, it's a good comment on, on breaking it apart. Um, it, we'll we'll see. You know, we don't know. Um, we're basically going to you know the reveals. Uh, they'll be. They'll be planned throughout the campaign. Uh, you know, we could see some of them sooner rather than later. Um, so yeah, we're, we're excited about the Rancor campaign. Uh, we're excited to see how it does. Uh, and so we, we could see some of those uh, tier reveals again, sooner rather than later. We will see. Thank you. Absolutely. Back to David from Endor Express. All right. So for a lot of the, the Black Series announcements or reveals for the Mandalorian season two, they're looking so, so fantastic. But now we're looking at getting them almost about the time when season three is starting. Is Lucasfilm holding back on reveals or is it just kind of, like you said, the state of the world and all the delays? And for the Book of Boba Fett, they just dropped the trailer. Will we be seeing, I think we saw some leaks already, but will we be seeing more figures on time for yeah. that show? Yeah, we, we talk a lot about balance, and I think it's a balance here as well. You know, we've said in the past, going all the way back to Episode 7, we saw Luke Skywalker in Episode 7 the same time fans did. Um, you know, we I've said in the past, our partners at Lucasfilm are, you know, the best in the business. We love working with them. They're great about providing us, providing the design team with, you know, whatever we need with concept art, photography, and more to create the lines. Um, that being said, it's often, you know, a decision that we make together to benefit uh, the TV viewing experience uh, for us to hold back that merchandise. So, 
you, you know, we, we in a perfect world, we would have kind of the product all on time. Uh, but we also know how magical it was. You know, I said earlier, I got goosebumps talking about it, seeing Luke at the end of episode seven. You know, we know how great it was for the world to experience the child there on the screen. Uh, and so it's important for us for that reveal of new characters to be a special moment for fans uh, so that viewers can kind of discover the story as it's unfolding. Uh, so we always try to strike that balance. So so we'll continue to see some some items kind of day and date with entertainment or shortly thereafter, and then some items that will take a little longer. Cool. All righty, back to Jose from Endor System. Well, the figure of George Lucas uh, will be the, be the last figure with the 50th anniversary logo from Lucasfilm. And do you plan to continue with this concept of figures package in boxes from other years? Maybe a packaging from episode two to the to celebrate the training anniversary next year? Yeah, I mean, that idea goes back, you know, I'm sure it goes back further in different ways, but in the Black series, it goes back to 2017 at least uh, with our episode four, 40th anniversary, and then certainly continued in 2020. And we kind of blew it out here in 2021 celebrating the 50 years instead of going back to a single moment in time we were celebrating the full journey and so we got to do you know items we actually did phantom menace as well in 2019 just uh, a couple items there we were able to expand that do clone wars uh do some other things um and it's been great to see the response so you, you know i i don't think we would expect to see it for clone wars there's so much going on in 2022 uh with new entertainment and uh, someone mentioned that the trailer that just dropped kicking it off so we're excited to focus there, but uh, given the the love and the kind of uh, excitement we've seen, you know, definitely safe to say that it's a good format and something will continue in the future in some form. Cool, awesome. All right, and back to Chris to end round two. Um, so you've revealed figure in the end coming to the Black Series line and to the Vintage Collection. And I was wondering what the plans were for this figure. Are you going to, in, you know, include uh, multiple instruments so we can build out the band, or is the plan to release those figures individually over time? Uh, it's, it's a good question. We we or, or we can't go into the details quite yet. Um, but basically, we we are aware uh, of the desire in both scales for the full band, and um, we're we're talking about and figuring out ways to to make that happen. That said, obviously, we can't deliver the full band in mainline, so. So we're, we're figuring it out, but there will certainly be a mainline release, but then, you know, also potentially a way to get the full band. Okay, cool. Thanks. Awesome. Absolutely. All righty. Back to the top uh, with Mark, and then I see Volker may have joined, so uh, we'll try to get him caught up. So, Mark, round three. Round three. Um, repaint and retools seems to be getting a focus with a heavier use of sublines, i.e. Credit Collection 50th, Carbonize, etc. Um some people think that it feels like it takes away from mainline releases. Is that the case or, the, or indeed the plan? Yeah, I think the short answer is no. Um, and I don't have the specific numbers in front of me, but I, I'm nearly certainly we, we have more mainline releases here in 2021 than we did, you know, and again, maybe it ebbs and flows a little bit, but certainly than in 2018 or 2017. Um, so the short answer is no, you know, we've said in the past, those are really a bonus. And I think if you look at the, the number of black series releases, um, uh, you know, it's, it's really exploded in the last year or two. So, uh, th those are a bonus. If they don't, uh, kind of get you excited, that's totally fine. And not you, Mark, but, uh, you kind of the fans out there, that's totally fine. Like, you know, not everyone needs to love everything, but, uh, they're there if you like them. And, uh, if you don't, they're not taken away from what you do like. Great. All righty. Do we have Volker? All right. Volker might be having some technical difficulties, so we'll we'll uh, try to get him caught up uh, if he's able to come on later. Uh, so for now, back to Dan for round three. Cool. Um, has for Pulse Premium members, why was there no early access uh, to the PulseCon 2021 Star Wars exclusives? A lot of people paid for the premium uh, membership just to get early access and other perks, but that doesn't seem to be happening. And also for the Hasbro Pulse uh, exclusives, is the Princess Leia Yavin Ford still scheduled to be released today? And is it going to be one o'clock? Um, so a few questions in there. Uh, so yeah. I'll try to get them all. But uh, yeah. basically, thanks for sharing the feedback from fans. Again, that's partly why we enjoy doing these to get that information. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, all I can say is, unfortunately, at the time, that is the policy. 
uh, you know, we hear you guys, we're going to take that feedback into consideration. But hopefully, you know, ten, uh, premium members enjoyed the 1027 event last week uh, with, with a few cool Black Series reveals that was just for premium members. Um, but yeah, no, that is the policy. Um, and what was your second question? Um, back on a what, couple months ago, you guys mentioned that uh, Princess Leia, Power of the Force, uh, carded Yavin 4 figure was oh, yeah, going to yeah. get pre-ordered today on uh, November 1st in the U.S. Is that still happening today or did it get pushed? Uh, I believe it's still today. Yeah. No, that is item one, is still coming to the U.S. Uh, 1 p.m. Eastern today? I, I, I'd have to circle back on the specific details. Oh, okay. Oh, probably. But that's usually our time. time. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. Awesome. Thanks. No problem. All right, David, back to you. All right. Um, I have a lightsaber question, if, if you guys can take that. Um, yeah. There's a lot of folks who visit Galaxy's Edge and buy those legacy lightsabers. Um, they always ask us, you know, what's the difference between Hasbro's releases? What can you talk, what, what can you tell us about that? Do you look at the differences and um, how do we tell fans, you know, how to, how to do their shopping, yeah. you know, the habits of buying yours versus Disney's? Yeah, it, absolutely. It's, it, it's really fun for us to see kind of all the great Star Wars uh, content and merchandise and products available at the Disney parks. I think we shared in our PulseCon presentation, uh, a group of us, I say us, I was on paternity leave, I wasn't able to go, but a group of us, Vicky was there, got to go uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, it, it's a really cool place. Um, you know, Vicky said great things. I can't wait to get there someday. Um, you know, in terms of lightsabers, we, for Hasbro, we love our Force Effects Elite line. Uh, it kind of stands on its own. And, you know, we're certainly aware of the park's offerings as we look to, to build out our line. We, we, we focus on what makes sense for our Force Effects Elite fans and build that line uh, for those fans, for Force Effects Elite collectors and casual fans alike. Okay, thanks. Oh, well, just a follow-up. Uh, you know, do you guys make your own decisions on which sabers to make, or does Lucasfilm kind of say, no, this is too close to a Disney release, or is there anything like that? Yeah, I think, again, that's kind of ends of the spectrum. We certainly don't kind of do anything in isolation, and they don't, like, tell us, you know, you have to do this. It's, as I've said, it's a great partnership. They bring fantastic insights and info. We do the same as well, and we hope we always arrive at the best conclusion. Cool, awesome. Jose, back to you. Yes, you answered it before, but with the announcement of the figure in that figure, how do you plan to sell it? As a basic figure with a single instrument, as a deluxe figure with five different instruments, or maybe as a multi-pack with five figures in, with all different instruments? Yeah. Uh, so I, I think a similar question was asked earlier. We're, we're not going to go into the specifics just yet. Uh, we, we understand the excitement for, for figuring out there uh, in both scales. Uh, but again, kind of like as, as we said before, we're, we're aware of the desire for the full ban. Uh, and we're, we're looking at ways to, to deliver that. Um, but, but that would be uh, separate from the mainline release. Cool. All right. And Chris, bring us to a close. Um, the Galaxy's Edge Black Series First Order multi-pack has General Hux in it. Is that an entirely newly sculpted head on that figure? Yes, that, that's a new head. So, yeah. Wanted to, wanted to address that portrait and, and do him justice. So he's got all the fun hair and, and everything he needed. <laughs> cool. It looks great. That's awesome. Yeah. Can't wait. I think Chris, Chris and his team, uh, kind of on the fan side for design, I think they do a great job of identifying, you know, which characters the photo reel update will unlock a great sculpt and which characters we really do need a new sculpt. So I think they nailed it there. Cool. All right. That's it for round three. Let's kick off round four. Back to Mark. And then again, we'll check in and see if Volker's with us. Excellent. Um, David very wisely asked, asked one of the questions I asked earlier, so I will ask a different one. Uh, on the fly. Uh, the Vader Sabre that you announced uh, last week that's coming out, um, can we anticipate familiar previously released Sabres to be coming out but with the additional upgrades or tweaks or better technology, stuff like that, that, that people can see these classic Sabres once again in Force Effects Elite line? Well, without saying anything about the specifics of Sabres, I mean, I think it's it's logical to assume that there's some classic Sabres that are important to to the show's um, and we're always looking to update and, and bring those, those things that you might have seen in our, 
our FX line into an FX elite line with all the enhanced features and, and benefits of that. So, yeah. Cool. All righty. Volker, are you with us? I know. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yes. Okay. Well, it's mighty problems here. The uh, computer keeps freezing up on me. No problem. Well, um, we'll, we'll try to catch you up. So uh, give us your first uh, couple questions. Well, let's start with the first one. Um, you just saw the Rebel 4-pack, and in the live stream, you claimed that uh, one of these troopers is the uh, Reg Ant uh, the Antilles. Um, and the question is here, will this be released on a, um, a new Hope card, maybe, because the figure itself is not very correct? The Captain Antilles, I mean. The, will the, I'm sorry, I, I don't think I understand the question. Will the Antilles figure be released on a, on a card back by himself? Right. Is you, show, you, you, yeah, you showed the Rebel Fleet Trooper four pack, and one of these figures is painted like the Captain until it's from the 10 to 4. Yes. But actually, it's like uh, just a Rebel Fleet Trooper with a new paint job. So basically, the boots are not correct, the vest, the jacket is not correct, and things like these. So, is there a chance you might correct these in a future release? Uh, well, I, I don't know that we would release that figure separately, but. I think, I mean, for the team, it was important to have a, a different figure and to address that character in there. So bringing that character to the four pack allowed a little bit of variety and, and a different look out of those. I, I, there's no plans for him currently as, a, as an individually carded figure though. Okay, thank you. Cool. Uh, Volker, do you have a second question? We'll try to get you caught up a little bit. Um, <laughs> I'm actually searching for them right now. Maybe skip no to the next guy and I'm going to look yep. at my questions. Yep, we can come back. All right, Dan, back to you. Round four. Um, will Hasbro, Hasbro be breaking up the newly revealed Disney Parks uh, shot Disney exclusive Galaxy Edge uh, Black Series First Order Droid Depot and Creature Packs later down the road and make them exclusive like they did with Target in the previous packs? Um, there's no current plans to do so, uh, and there weren't those plans kind of when uh, those items launched in 2019. Uh, that Target Galaxy's Edge uh, can program last year provided a great opportunity to do that. If a similar opportunity comes up down the line, you know, we're certain open to it. But right now, the plan is for those items to just be available in the Galaxy's Edge sets. Cool. Thank you. Absolutely. David, back to you. I was typing. Um... <laughs> So um, we love the Mando, uh, we love Grogu figures. I feel like as collectors, we've been getting the same figure quite often. <laughs> so I'm wondering when we might see a cloth cape on Mando or something that can drape a little better with the, the rocket pack behind him. Or uh, for which... For which Black series, I guess. Uh, yeah. And I... It's it's a nice feature upgrade. I mean, I don't have any specifics to tell you about anything coming, but I mean, I we're always looking for ways to improve and modify things that way. Um, the in regard to like the cloth cape and backpack, like that's a that's a nice way to address having that with the backpack. Um, but sometimes it doesn't make sense for for the posing and stuff of the figure, and to be able to really give a uh, an accurate look to things so we tend to we tend to lean into the accuracy a little more sometimes but yeah nothing's off the table so and i'm sure we're gonna see more variations of his outfit and look yeah we go forward so yeah, i hope so because thing. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, i want to just change up the besides paint that goes like like a different looking mando on the shelf yeah we'll see we'll see what comes all right so. thank you cool Jose, back to you. The figure of Trapper Wolf inspired by the character of Dave Filoni was a success. Do you have plans to make more figures of this style, such as the character of John Williams in episode nine, or Ron McQuarrie in episode five, or Richard Mark one in episode six, to mention just a few options? Yeah, I mean, we don't have any anything to announce now, but I, I, we've said it before, like we're fans of those two. And any chance that we can to, to pay tribute or say thanks in that way to creators is important to us. And especially, 
and I'm sure Patrick feels the same way, but as a designer and someone who creates stuff for a living, I, I feel like it's, it's our responsibility to acknowledge other creators in that. And, and those are a great way to do that. So where it makes sense for the line and where it makes sense for what else is going on, I think we'll try and find ways to do that. Cool. Awesome. All righty. Um, and back to Chris for the finale of round three. Um, the vintage collection Navarro Cantina place that looks great. Um, we know that you can build around the corners, but is it possible to pluck two of them next to each other to make it longer? Kind of keeping the uh, the IKEA Billy bookcase in mind, right? Because it's a little tricky to uh, build forward because they're not that deep. But I know a lot of people have those to display their collections. So I was wondering if you could pluck them together side by side or make it longer. Yeah, they're they're configurable in different ways. I mean, we show a couple of, of ways on the package, but it's designed to be modular so that you can you don't have to go with what we've shown. That you can kind of create your own displays of it. Okay. Cool. Alrighty, let's jump to Volker for a couple questions, and then we'll we'll go back to the top. Okay, quick one. Um, the trooper four packs, the uh, stormtrooper packs, and the rebel fleet trooper packs are hardly available here in Europe, and UK is not Europe. So um, I'm wondering how are we supposed to uh, troop build with these figures? I mean, it's a great idea, and uh, the price point seems right, but where's the availability for us? Absolutely, yeah. So so it will be available through Shop Disney and in whatever markets have Shop Disney. Um, I I have confirmed recently uh, the, the EU will uh, outside the UK. Uh, Europe will be getting availability later this year and into 2022. And we've talked a lot about the state of the world here today. It's, you know, it's later than it would have normally been, but I have confirmed that they are still coming. Um, you know, and, and Pulse is obviously the other end of these items. Hasbro Pulse is actively working to expand to additional markets outside the U.S. and Canada and the U.K. No other specifics at this point, uh, but more details to come there. So, so we're excited about both of those potential ways to get these items to you guys. Yeah, please get them here. Yeah. People are looking for these. Yeah, yeah. I, I get it. <laughs> of course you do. Uh, next question would be um, about the um, pools exclusives. The uh, Emperor Throne Room so far has shown up here in Germany and in Europe, but the Trapper Wolf and the Cantina set uh, so far has not. Yeah. Any ideas? Yeah. So these are these are different than Pulse and Shop Disney exclusives. These are these are convention exclusives. So they're handled exactly like our convention exclusives from the past, whether they launched at Celebration or San Diego. Um, they've always launched at the lead convention and then they've been available globally and these are handled the same. So you're right, uh, the Emperor's Throne Room, I, you know, I confirm that is coming to Germany. Uh, I, I haven't heard on the other two. Uh, it, it's always our goal to ensure that those are available globally and we'll continue striving for that. Okay, thank you. Absolutely, and we'll, we'll come back to you for your last two, Volker. Uh, but first, uh, let's do Mark, uh, Mark's final question. Okay, um, it's a HasLab question. Um, what is the model of HasLab? Um, is it only going to be the big ticket items, which so far have been fantastic across the brands, uh, or will it eventually be used for other things like smaller, desirable items that might not be quite right for mainline and retail? Yeah, so so the dream for HasLab, the vision is is to deliver dream items. So it, it, it's never kind of been explicitly limited to big things. It's those dream items that we can't get any other way. Um, and so, you, you know, those smaller but desirable things in a different interview, we talked, they talked about figure packs. Uh, those, you know, we have no current plans for those at this point, uh, but they're certainly not out of scope. It's definitely something we could do in the future. Again, our goal is to use HasLab to deliver those items that fans you know, are, are dreaming about and would love to own and we can't get to them in a different way. Cool, awesome. All righty, let's do Dan and then we'll skip back to Volker for his last two questions. Well, uh, my last question was about the figure of Dan, uh, including all the instruments, maybe it's a deluxe pack, but you already answered that. Yep. So I'll ask um, the three figures in the Cantina Showdown playset. We already know that Ponda Baba and Dr. Sun as a uh, single box. We've seen some pictures online leaked already. Will the Obi-Wan be single box in the future or is it going to be exclusive to the set home? Yeah, uh, you know, we can't we can't comment on anything that was leaked. Yeah. Uh, but right now there are no current plans to do uh, the photo real deco update Obi-Wan anywhere else. Okay. Absolutely. Cool. All righty, Volker, uh, last two questions. Yeah, I'm going to 
throw a quick one in here. Uh, talking about the figure in Dan, Angela said hi, and she was weeping, not hearing her name. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, about the Ranko, the Haslab uh, situation here. This is now the third Haslab that uh, is basically um, really not including the Europeans again. So once again, we're sitting with Zavi, which is actually a UK retailer, in mm -hmm. order to get the Ranker. And I just looked up the population. I mean, the population of Europe is like 170 million compared to 63 million uh, in the UK. Nothing against my fellow collector friends in the UK, but um, Mark's a lot right of people there, Volker. He's right yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of people that are looking for like a little bit of easier access. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like it's a third attempt now. And again, we're kind of left out here. And uh, yeah. as you know, we have to pay lots of custom import fees just to get this thing over here. Yeah, no, I think there's two things here. So, so one is, and we might have talked about it in the past, but you know, obviously we've come, you know, light years from where we were with the barge, uh, and so kind of we're, we're we're excited to make progress, but but we're never kind of just you know being like, all right, we're done, and we're looking to continue making that progress. So that could be through you know uh, other retail partners. That's a possibility. And, and then again, kind of you know the point about you know Hasbro Pulse. We are certainly. Uh, exploring uh, and actively working to expand to additional markets beyond the US, Canada, and the UK. So uh, that, you know, once that happens, then that unlocks that way to deliver the items. So uh, again, we're, we're excited, you know, at some point in the future to announce more additional details there if that pans out. I know you guys try your best. I'm sure it will, be, I'm sure it will improve. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right, and then, yep, last question, Volker. Yeah, about the cantina, the Navarra cantina is actually like another uh, cool piece of uh, play site here. Um, the only thing that I'm wondering is like in the past we had like, I don't know, when there were the movies coming, we had uh, figures coming out in advance. Now we got the book of Boba Fett coming and we really have nothing like coming in advance other than a couple of characters that we're like chasing up and just to fill up in the line, but nothing like in advance to show us or to deliver us like, I don't know, Boba Fett's throne, stuff like that, which is yeah. actually Bib Fortuna's throne. <laughs> yeah, it's a cool idea. Um, it, it, we, I forget if we talked about it on this uh, conversation or another one, but we always try to strike a balance. Obviously, in a perfect world, we would have, you know, all the toys to support a property day and date with that movie or TV show. Uh, at the same time, you know, we know how magical it was for fans to see Luke at the end of episode seven for the first time and not know he was coming to see the child Grogu at the beginning of the Mandalorian and not know he's coming. So we have great conversations with Lucasfilm about striking that balance and delivering product where it makes sense, uh, timed with movies or TV shows, and then holding it back where it makes sense. So uh, I have no doubt that at some point in the future, we're going to see a lot of great stuff from uh, the Book of Boba Fett. And I'm excited, loving this conversation, but excited for it to be done so I can go watch that trailer that was dropped. Uh, but, you know, we'll just see when that is. But we'll get it out as quickly as possible when it makes sense. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. All righty. Dan, last question from you. Oh, oh sorry. Yes. Oh, yeah, sorry. The, the, the jumping around <laughs> confused me. Uh, and kudos to Dan for not grabbing an extra question there. Oh, uh, <laughs> so, David, last question from you. Uh, all right, this one's an easy one. So CB23 in the Galaxy's Edge pack is the first character from uh, the Star Wars Resistance cartoon. Um, was that just just like an easy kind of, let's that would be fun to do, or and are there future plans for Resistance in Black Series line? I mean, I, know, I think the answer is probably not, but <laughs> I had to ask. <laughs> No, and no plans for any more. But that was a that was a fun character to do because you see that character or pieces of the character at Galaxy's Edge. So it, it made sense that way with with stuff we had available. So cool, awesome. All right, Jose, what do you got? How difficult was to choose the Rancor as a third Hasla Black Series project? Do you have more options, or was the Rancor the only option from the beginning? Uh, definitely not the only option. Again, kind of the Star Wars galaxy is so vast. Uh, there were a lot of good options, but I, I think we said in the, the PulseCon launch segment, you know, going back four years, like the Rancor as a potential Black Series item was, was in conversations from the very beginning. So um, it's, it's so iconic, you know, it's so memorable. It's, it's, it's a great size. It's something, again, to the point earlier, we couldn't do any other way. Uh, it's that dream item that was only possible through HasLab. Um, and again, you know, as we announced, it's going to ship in early 2023. And 
you know, it's from Return of the Jedi. And so we were excited to kind of celebrate that movie in that window. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, it wasn't difficult. It was kind of the, the perfect option, but there were many other great choices and many other great potential projects in the future. Cool. All righty. Absolutely. Thank you. Chris, bring us to a close. Um, the bubble on the vintage collection, Mando Christ, uh, Mandalorian that comes with the spider, uh, looks rather large. Um, would you consider bringing back the packaging type or style that you had for the Kmart exclusive uh, Imperial Scanning Crew and the Ewok with uh, catapults, maybe for uh, sets like that? I, it's, it's a good thought. Um... It, that set in particular was it was kind of a unique set with with all of those accessories, and really want to be able to show those off well. So it it made a lot of sense there. I don't think I don't think there's been a decision about like how to handle that sort of thing down the road. But I I don't think it I don't think it's unreasonable to expect us to do more kind of larger sets like that. So we'll see what form that takes as we go. But okay. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. Uh, we love doing these. Um, and, you know, we, we know that you take time out of your day. It might be crazy hours, depending on where you are in the world. But uh, it's great for us to chat Star Wars and, again, hear what you guys are talking about and what your, your readers and listeners are thinking. So thank you guys so much. And we look forward to doing this again uh, at some point in the future. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.